All right, everybody. It is Friday, and we are on our way to Chicago for Fan Expo. And uh, today is opening day. It's a three-day show. I've never been to it before. I miss C2E2, but from what I'm told, Fan Expo is the next best thing to C2E2, and it has quite a few high-profile comic dealers. So we're going to see a lot of really good comics. I mean, a lot. A lot. You guys are in for a treat. Assuming we make it there, I'm going to take some good video. And, of course, I'll buy some stuff. I don't know if I'll buy anything big or, you know, just stack up on, you know, a bunch of smaller stuff. But we will see. So I'm hoping to get in early. The show doesn't open till 4 o'clock on Friday. Um, and it goes till 9. If you have a VIP pass, you can get in at 2. And if you're uh, able to get in with a dealer, you can get in as early as like 10 or 11 o'clock. So we'll see what happens. But either way, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to take a lot of good video. And we'll see what Chicago Fan Expo is all about. All right, here we go. guys so we made it across the sky bridge this is the entrance to the convention center and somehow some way we're gonna get our pass and then we'll take some video and see some comics all right which way am I going here this hall left figure out where to go. All right, guys, we have made it into the show. We're on the floor, we got our pass. People are still doing some last minute setups here, but we're just gonna do a quick walk around to see what it looks like. And right off the bat, I see tons of comics. On my right, on my left. Dave's Comics and Toys, the Reese family is here, uh, Victory Comics, Graham Cracker Comics. Sorry, this is just going to be kind of like a quick and dirty of who's here. Terry's Old School Comics. I don't know, some of these people. I don't know, Red Hood Comics, we know him. Harley Yee. My goodness. So I'll stop by some booths later on and do some close-ups of things. Uh, Dale Roberts, the only other place I've seen him. I know he goes everywhere, but I see him down in Dallas at the Collector Summit. Um, all right, some other guys not familiar with. All right, let's go down the next aisle. Never seen so many Funko Pops. Holy smokes. Racks upon racks of Pops. Comics here, lots of toys, lots of Legos. Oh, again, I don't know the names of some of these places, but there's another booth we'll have to stop in at. Being the first day of a show, Dying Breed Collectors. Um, high grade comics. There's Harley's booth again. A lot of stuff here. All right, but uh, like I said, um, be being 
a Friday Super World. Here's dime recollectors. I'm really not sure how many deals we're gonna find, right? A lot of times deals are really made on Sundays. But sometimes a lot of the good stuff is gone on Sundays, so you know, there's always a risk in waiting. So anyway, like I said, I got uh, one shot here. Being, uh, I gotta head back tomorrow at home. So yeah, um, but this looks very encouraging. Lots of great stuff. Silver Age comics. Aren't they from New York? I think they're still doing setup here. But great, great stuff. State of Comics. State of Comics are from back in Michigan. Great, great stuff here. Really great stuff. All right. All right, everyone. So that's like the quick and dirty. And uh, we got many, many hours of fun here to go. Okay, I'm gonna start talking to people. All right, so the doors have been open for about an hour here, but only for early passes and VIPs. But you can tell it's much busier. And then in about another hour, they open to the general public. So, we'll see how things go. All right, let's, uh, let's find a booth to take a closer look at here. Open. 
people are streaming in. It's kind of crazy for a Friday, but streaming in. So this this is a this is a big big show. And I know probably doesn't compare to something like uh, San Diego or New York Comic Con, but much bigger than I thought it would be, especially for a Friday night. All right, I'm gonna keep going.
All right, well, as you can see, we are back on the road. We are on our way home back to Michigan. We stayed until the bitter end of the show. I was gonna try and leave earlier, but um, stayed until the end. Just had too much fun talking to people, looking at books, and um, but right now, we're just gonna focus on the road, get home safely. We got about four and a half hours here. And uh, of course, as you know, I'll do a wrap-up video, talk about everything that we saw, show you what we picked up, and uh, and that'll be it, all right? So, all right, heading home. Okay, so we made it back from Chicago Fan Expo, and I will admit something to you right now. It's been about 10 days since that show, and I have not made my wrap-up video. There's just been a lot going on. I had to do some travel. Um, but we're going to get into it, going to talk about it a little bit. Um, you saw the video. It was great. First of all, I've got to give thanks to my man, Don Davis from Chicago, who hooked me up with this, and that really helped me get into the show early and uh, get a lot of video before things got crazy. And um, I didn't get I, I wish I would have gotten uh, Don on the camera now that I'm thinking about it, but I didn't do a whole lot of video um, early, early when I first got there. there was a lot of walking around and then, you know, he was getting some things done and um, then he had to take off and and I stayed for the rest of the evening a lot longer than I thought I would. But thank you to Don for getting me into the show early. I uh, really appreciate it. I own one. I'm going to go out there again and uh, do a video looking at his collection again, which you guys, if you saw over a year ago, he has some really, really great stuff, uh, really high grade stuff. So anyway, the show itself was fantastic. If you were looking for great comic books and high end comic book dealers, that is a show to go to. Now, I've never been to C2E2, so uh, obviously... I can't make a comparison. I asked a whole bunch of people there, how does this compare? Because uh, those are some of the best dealers I've seen outside of uh, Collector Summit down in Dallas that I go to every year. And uh, most people said it's uh, just as good, if not a little bit better, as far as comic books are concerned. Um, you know, a few people here and there said uh, they seem to think C2E2 is, is dwindling in terms of comics as opposed to other stuff that traditional or or modern I should say modern comic cons have turned into we know right it's it's more about Funko Pops and uh, cosplay and you know g getting celebrities there uh, so the the focus on comic books on big comic cons has has really shrunk over the years but Regardless, Chicago Fan Expo was more than what I thought it would be. The Again, quality comic books there were great. Um, in terms of prices, and I'm going to show you what I got because fairly decent stack. Prices were... I want to be careful with how I say this because, uh, you know, I, I really don't ever want to offend anyone. Um, prices are high. There and I get it. The costs for the dealers that go there are high as well, but in most cases they're willing to work with you at least a little bit. In most cases, especially with some of the books I bought this time, if you're looking for really high grade stuff, like for instance, uh, Bronze Age Horror, and I fell back into it on this trip. I really moved into Silver Age superhero stuff again for a while with you know some Bronze Age Horror here and there. And obviously, I'm always buying pre-code horror stuff, but not really at uh, at this show, right? When I go to the shows, I don't buy a whole lot of pre-code horror. I do that more so on auction websites. But but anyway, um, I think some people will probably say that you know I probably overpaid on some of the stuff, but it's getting harder and harder to find high grade uh, Bronze Age horror because people are snatching them up. And then uh, either selling them for exorbitant prices to try and, you know, level up to the next highest grade, or they're just holding on to them. So uh, really difficult to find high grade quality Bronze Age horror. And, um, and there was a lot more than what I bought 
It's just that I couldn't bring myself to buying the other things. The prices were so high on them. And again, I'm not saying they were um, irrational prices on some of the books. It's just that I just wasn't willing to go to those lengths and those prices just yet on some of them. So I got some, I got some good ones um, that I'll take you through. But uh, overall, I don't think prices were any different than you would see at a normal big Comic-Con. That was my takeaway. And uh, the just all the time I spent talking to the different dealers and people that I've uh, seen many times before and catching up with them and um, just refining those relationships and establishing new ones. There are some new people that, that I met. And I didn't get to about half the booths, even though uh, I knew I only had one night there. And uh, there was a chance I was going to stay overnight, but I, I still had to get home the next day. Um, but then, you know, I was just <laughs> the the show. I, I didn't want to battle the show on a on a Saturday because the thought was if I stayed another day um, and then left to go home the next day, I would have convinced myself, well, at least go to the show for a couple more hours. But uh, the crowds on Saturday there probably would have been just too crazy for me. I like Fridays and I like Sundays and I try to avoid the Saturday. Um, that That's just how I do it. So, uh, but anyway, all right, let's get into it. And I can talk a little bit more as I go through the books. First ones I'm going to show you are a small stack of Marvel Bronze Age Horror. So we've got, I always have trouble getting this in the right spot. Um, Supernatural Thrillers number seven with The Living Mummy. Um, a couple different Frankensteins, number four and number six. Beware, number one, with a werewolf cover. Again, really, really nice high grade on that one. Uh, Crypt of Shadows, number four. Number six, both really high grade. And number eight, which is a... Um, this is actually a Golden Age cover. And I'm trying to remember who did it. Because I have the book, I think it's Uncanny Tales number 23. And the artist is escaping me for some reason, but I'm going to put it on the screen like I do a lot of times when I forget while I'm recording here. So uh, I've always loved this cover, um, even in uh, the Bronze Age Horror Crypt of Shadows. Again, number eight. That's it for Marvel. And then I got a whole bunch of DV DC stuff. So a couple weird mystery tales, both Louis Dominguez covers. Issue number 15 with uh, the werewolf knocking down the door. And then number 16, a really cool Scarecrow cover. I've always liked that cover. Um, a couple Neil Adams covers. Uh, Detective Comics number 407 with Man Bat. And then a classic Brave and the Bold number 93. Um, I know if you're seeing the price tags on some of these, they're pretty high because they are uh, really, really high grade. Um, again, the, uh, dealers were willing to work with me on the price of this, but, but this is the book that, um, this is the homage of the house of mystery, um, book, which was the actually, I believe thought to be the first DC bronze age horror book. And again, I don't remember the house of mystery issue number. I'll put it up on the screen, but, uh, and I'll put a picture of it up there too, but this is an homage to that cover. And then I got, looks like a handful, a good handful of Witching Hour books. Most of them really nice grade. Some of them, uh, you know, mid-grade or so. It, no low-grade books here. So issue 14, these are kind of all over the map. Issue number four, number six, number 15, uh, number 18. That bag's a little bit wrinkled. Um, number 21. And number 13, really nice grade on issue number 13. Um, a handful of dark mansions. These aren't like big keys or anything, but uh, they were really nice grade at nice prices. So number 11, um, number I have that one covered up, the price tag's covering up. So I don't remember what issue number that is. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Sorry, my bad. Number 12. So I have 11, 12. 13 and 15. All really nice high grade. Only one House of Mystery book, but uh very cool full moon cover with the the witch on her broomstick flying in front of it. 
So, um, really, really nice cover. I'd say this is probably VF condition. And then I got a whole bunch of Secrets of Haunted House. So most of these are, are later in the run, but again, they're just really nice. Most of these are really nice high grade. And even the ones um, in the later runs are harder, getting harder and harder to find in high grade. Okay, so a couple issues of, of 43, issue 41, issue 34, 27 with the mummy on the cover. Issue 18, and then issue 46, I believe that's the last issue in the run, with all the witches on the cover here, driving this guy crazy. And then uh, the last two, also Secrets of Haunted House. I just saved these to the end because they're both Bernie Wrightson covers. So issue 44, which is near the end, um, guy carrying the uh, jack-o'-lantern there and getting attacked by a whole bunch of creatures. And then um, this one, just a really cool pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern cover. Um, again, Bernie Wrightson. It's not super high grade. It's got color breaking crease right here in the bottom corner, which is unfortunate, but it was there. So I got it. I only saw two of these at the show. The other one was uh, in much worse condition. Um, if anyone else found one at the show, let me know. But uh, that was it. Again, I really, really enjoyed it. I wish I could have uh, stayed for more of the show over the weekend, but uh, I just couldn't. And uh, that was a really long day anyway. I spent, uh, I think it was over nine hours there. And then I drove back that night and got back home. If I left there around nine, somewhere between nine and 9.30 Chicago time, that means it was already 10 or 10.30 Detroit time. And I got back home a little after 3 a.m. So uh, lots of caffeine consumed during that trip, but great show. Uh, thanks to everyone that was there that worked with me on the books that I got. And, uh, again, I have uh, a lot of these or a lot of the ones these will be replacing will be part of my annual horror Instagram claim sale that I have, uh, every year we do live sales throughout the year, but that is our biggest one by far. It is a marathon event. Um, it may end up being like a whole day event. It's usually three or four hours long, but we may go longer this year. So we are working up towards that. But uh, anyway, that's it. Let me know what you think. Any comments? Which books do you like? Uh, which one's your favorite? And uh, if you went to the show, how did you like it? And what did you think of the prices and the, the different books that were offered there? So uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, have a great day.